Hi, my name is John Harity. I work with Standard Electric Supply. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I'm very excited to talk to you today about how to send an email from an M241 or M251 PLC from Schneider Electric. This video should also apply for sending emails from other industrial devices, such as a Magellus HMI or any industrial printers out there uh, pretty much a wide range of, of products should be able to implement some of the methods discussed here. I really hope that this is helpful for you and if it is please feel free to check us out in further detail. Um, our website is down below. Uh, we sell a very wide range of industrial automation equipment. We have uh, network adapters, gateways, we have drives, we have uh, PLCs, HMIs, sensors, switches, contactors, relays, I could go on and on. Check us out, we've got a lot to offer. We've been in the business for almost 100 years. We have over 25 engineers on staff and we're based out of Wisconsin, Illinois, and Indiana. So this PLC is set up to send emails by pressing a push button or by scanning your finger with this biometric switch. And uh, it's connected with an ethernet cable to my laptop running a software called S-Tunnel. S-Tunnel provides the SSL encryption to be able to send the email off to the email server. In this case, everything is done with Gmail. So I'm going to cover the ports required, the setup with S-Tunnel, the setup with Soul Machine. You need to have Soul Machine 4.2 or higher to get this to work. So with that said, let's dive into the software. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us down in the description below. And have a great day. All right, so in order to send an email from an M241 or M251 PLC or any other industrial device, the first thing you need to do is configure a laptop or other computer, it could be a low cost Raspberry Pi device if you choose, that can encrypt the message before sending it to the email server. So uh, we need to first of all establish a connection between the laptop and the PLC. So here I have an IP, a fixed IP address configured that's going to be on a local area network offline connected to the PLC. That is very, very important for security purposes as well. Um, this IP address is in the 10.100 subnet. So if I go to my command prompt and ping the PLC, you will see that I am connected. Next thing you want to do is make sure that you're connected to the internet from the same laptop. So you're going to have to have a wireless interface card, a wireless network interface card installed in this laptop or some other means to get out to the internet. Um, in my case it's Wi-Fi, it could be another LAN port that's connected to the web. And firewalls are important here. If you run into any difficulties, check the firewalls, try turning them off when you're doing tests, but hopefully this video will help uh, with any stumbling blocks. Next step is to install S-Tunnel. So I'm using S-Tunnel 5.44 um, for the Windows 32 installation. I am on a Windows 64-bit OS. Um, any 32-bit app will run on there. So we'll go ahead and install this. And don't get too hung up here on the settings. You can, um, this doesn't really matter too much. This is establishing a certificate um, for the SSL authentication. Um, and we'll go ahead and start S-Tunnel. So it will show up in the taskbar. If I double click on it, you'll see it pop up here and you can see configuration was successful. When you install S-Tunnel, you do not need to install anything else. Um, uh, a lot of people think you need to install OpenSSL binary files or other software to be able to get the message to go out. None of that's needed. Um, S-Tunnel uh, and probably other softwares out there. S-Tunnel is a nice software to use. This in includes the OpenSSL binaries inside of it. So it already um, compiles and runs with it. So we are all configured and ready to go, except for one very important thing. We need to modify the configuration. Um, if you're having difficulties, this is very important. Now, the S-Tunnel is a server to 
the PLC. The PLC is an email client. So these client mode services settings here are not so important except for communicating with the email server. So um, we are, since this demonstration includes just sending emails from the PLC, um, we're going to focus on SMTP only. Um, and we don't even need to um, use the SMTP call, uh, function call there. We're going to delete all of that. But we do need to leave client equals yes. That's indicating that it is acting as a client. Um, for the server mode, same type of thing. We're going to delete the POP3 and IMAP settings. And uh, we're going to disable the comments on these other lines. And uh, the connect port is going to um, the email server for SSL. So this is actually 465, whereas the accept port is the, going to the PLC, which is 25. And there's one other thing we need to add here, smtp.gmail.com. And we'll say save and exit. Now we need to reload that configuration. Okay, so we are all set. Now let's go ahead and configure the PLC. So with the PLC, first things first, you establish the IP address. Next thing you're going to want to install the email handling library. Add library, Schneider Electric, select communication, email handling. Say OK. I've already added it. Here you can see in the list uh, that it has three different function blocks. We are going to focus on the send email. Next is is the program. So it's best to configure your program in a continuous function chart uh, programming method. And the reason I say that is because you have access to the composer block. So the composer block is really convenient because when you drag it onto the list here, you get some input pins. That's going to be really helpful for the structured element coming into the credentials input pin on the send email block. So you can see I can add these in uh, directly. It's just a matter of convenience, really. These are all proprietary function blocks. Um, so uh, taking a look at the settings up, up above here, you can see I'm sending the email. The recipient is going to be a Yahoo email account. And I have a message machine down situation. This is an email from the M241 PLC. The credentials, um, I have the IP address of the laptop running S-Tunnel. Port is 25, domain doesn't matter, put in whatever you want there, and uh, some people like to put smtp.gmail.com, others at gmail.com, gmail, whatever you want, but that is not going to affect how this operates. The sender email is coming from a Gmail account. Okay, so next we're going to configure the Gmail account, or at least check the settings. We're going to go to um, our Gmail account and uh, confirm the settings. So uh, if I go into the settings area, um, we'll check the forwarding, pop and IMAP. None of these need to be modified from their defaults unless you are receiving emails on the PLC. In that case, you would enable pop and keep Gmail's copy in the inbox. The one important thing that we do need to do, however, is go to accounts and import, other Google account settings, and we need to go to the sign in and security and select apps with account access and we need to turn this on so allow less secure apps that needs to be on by default it is off so I've been playing around a little bit it's on now for this account so everything should be set we should be able to um, send an email from this account through the PLC now that email is going to come into my Yahoo account so we'll go ahead and um, move this over here We'll move this down here. And we'll be able to see it come in at the bottom of the screen. So we're going to go online with the PLC. And we are going to expand the send email function block so we can see the status. So here you have the result and the result message. This is where you're going to want to look to make sure that email gets sent correctly. So we're going to go ahead and say true, true, and control F7 uh, takes the prepared value and puts it into the value. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Here you can see message to server sent, ready, wait for execution. 
Brilliant. Looks like it worked. Let's take a look down here. There's our email. So it came in. Um, now another thing to check is the laptop that's running S-Tunnel. If you don't have that configured correctly, this will sit here on waiting to connect to the server. It will just sit there and hang for a long time. If if uh, the, the message disconnects and there's an error or something else um, and it quickly transitions to not being able to connect to the server, um, there's some uh, typically some other issue, but if it's waiting to connect, that means there's usually something wrong with the S-Tunnel. So let's take a look at the S-Tunnel to make sure that everything got sent out correctly. So here with S-Tunnel, you can see that uh, the connection was received from the PLC and uh, it went and sent it off to the server. So uh, the connection closed after everything was done, but the key, key point here is that you wanna see this information. If you're not seeing that, that means your S-Tunnel is not set up correctly. I hope this was helpful. Um, thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.